wanted to do a very quick update on where I'm at with this linear amplifier. I think I'm finished. Um, as you can see, I've put it in a box. The touch screen is now mounted here. This is a 3D printed uh, basal type of thing. Um, so as we set out at the very beginning when we when I published what the objectives of this were, this is touch screen control. So you, you touch the button here to select the, uh, the band. And as you can probably hear, you can hear the relays clicking as the different low pass filters switch in. I've put a transmit and receive light on the front and a power switch. This is, there's a PTT socket on the back, just a, um, an RCA or phono type socket. Now there's an input signal to this which will drive it to peak. So as soon as I short this out, the amplifier will go into transmit. And you can see the forward and reflected power readings. It's into a dummy load. The SWR is calculating at 1.1, 1.04. It changes every second or so. Um, so that's working as we as we designed. Let go of it and it goes back into receive. I've built a very simple sequencer, which I'll talk to you about in a few minutes. Um, the other thing then, let me just turn it round and uh, show you quickly what's on the back. So the back, um, what we've got on the back, this is the RF in, so this is the, the rig input effectively. This is the heat sink that came with the kit. Um, this is the, uh, the output socket, so this is where the output of the amplifier is. This is the PTT line, and this is another 3D printed thing which I'll show you. This is a, a power pole connector socket. So that's all that's on the back of the amplifier. So I'll whip the top off and talk you through that and uh, then I'll just show you quickly about the sequencer. So this is the inside of the amplifier. Um, I think it's pretty much as you'd expect it to be. So this is the low pass filter module that we built. I think I built kind of half of it when I showed it in the video. I've added 20 meters, 30 meters, 40 meters and 80 meters. For 60 meters I'm using the 40 meter low pass filter and I haven't done anything for top band yet. Uh, but those are the low pass filters and the pairs of relays that are switching them in and out. This is the directional coupler and the two logarithmic amplifiers that we built. This is the actual um, QRP Labs kit, which is bolted on the back through the back panel onto the heat sink, which is on the back here. There's the power pole connector here. So this is a 3D print, it's like a nut and bolt where you slip a power pole connector inside, tighten up the nut that fits through a 22 millimeter hole. Very, very neat solution. That power comes in, goes to the power switch on the front panel, and then back to this buck boost little board here, which regulates it down to five volts. Then the five volts feeds the um, STM32 board that we used here for the touchscreen control and for switching all of the low pass filters. Now, what I wanted to tell you about, I looked at building a sequencer. I don't think for a second I need a sequencer for this amplifier, but because I can, and probably as yet more evidence that I really, really need to get out more, I decided to write one in software. So I've actually put another STM32 board in here, kind of because I can. They cost about three bob and a conker. So this actually controls the transmit receive switching. So there's uh, one transmit receive switch that tra that pushes these two relays. There's a relay on the input socket and the relay on the output socket. They're not RF relays, they're just conventional double pole, double throw, 12 volt relays. So those two close a kind of as event one and then I think 200 milliseconds later event two which is taking the TX line to ground on the amplifier to switch on the bias. So that's the sequence of events that happens and then it happens in reverse when we go back into receive. So a complete bird's nest. I don't I'm not great at construction and tidy and neatness, but it's functional and it kind of works really well. I'm actually delighted with this. I think we've got a really, really good project. So to very quickly finish off, I thought about a sequencer for this amplifier to do things really properly. This is something I built for a 23 centimeter amplifier a few years ago. It's a conventional analog sequencer. So what happens is here, the input gets grounded, which basically passes power to this capacitor, which charges. As the, capac the voltage in the capacitor kind of ramps up, as it's ramping up, that ramping voltage is fed to these four comparators, which have each got a different potential set by these this cascading potential divider. So basically, as the voltage ramps up, so this switches on, then this, then this, then this, and then when you release the PTT, so the 
the capacitor discharges and so this gets released this gets released this gets released this gets released and then downstream from these comparators we've either got transistor switches or MOSFET switches for high current switching or, or what have you but what I realized very quickly was that I could do this in software quite easily so I put together three transistor switches one on the input so this is the um, RCA jack that's on the back of the amplifier when this gets grounded this uses a, a just a PNP transistor I think it's a 2N3906 is it or something I can't remember a general purpose PNP transistor that takes this high on transmit and that goes to pin PB12 and then PB13 and 14 these are all just general purpose IO pins on the STM32 these go high but they go 20 200 milliseconds after each other and through these uh, 2N2222 I used here I think it grounds these two events. Event one in my case which is the two transmit receive relays that are on the back panel so there's one on the antenna socket one on the rig socket so effectively in receive the the amplifier is bypassed and event two is we ground the TX line on the QRP labs amplifier so that actually switches on the bias and everything else on the amp so that's what that's doing very very quickly show you the PTT sequencer so what I've done um, I've declared a bunch of stuff this is just the pins and various other things up here and then I read in the digital signal if it's changed I read it again and basically if it's still changed after this debounce delay which is 50 milliseconds so if the PTT has been pressed or released for more than 50 milliseconds then we act on it and if it's gone high we go through the sequence for transmit if it's gone low we go through the sequence on receive on transmit we set the LED this is inverted on the STM32 board that actually switches it on but then we write high to my PTT1 we wait for my delay and then we write high to my PTT2 in my case the delay is at the top it's set at 200 milliseconds and then when we go to receive we do everything in the opposite direction that's it for the software and I've used an STM32 it's kind of an insult to the processor to make it run this really because it's so trivial um, but it works really neatly and of course this would be usable for other things you could adapt it you could change my uh, silly little transistor switches for MOSFETs you could switch very high current you could do all sorts of great things with this um, the only other thing that I've changed that's, that needs to be mentioned in the actual linear control amplifier stuff itself I've made the 60 meter um, low pass filter the same as the 40 meter one um, I've declared these two constants here and then created something called power meter mode which I've set to be peak you can set it to be peak or AVE for average and then lower down in the software when it does the RF sampling I had it originally so that it was taking the average reading and reporting that but what I've done now is I've changed the software so it takes 10 samples or whatever it is and finds the highest so it reports the highest reading every time it takes samples now so that's what the software is doing. But again, you know, there's loads of potential here. You could change the touch screen to switch from peak to average. You could change the touch screen so that it displays the SWR in different colors, depending on the results. There's numerous things you could do with this to expand the functionality and make it bigger and bigger and better. My aim through this channel on YouTube is to try and share a bit of my fun and my knowledge. And hopefully, if I just encourage one person to take this code, have a play with it, and learn something, understand, change it, and build something yourself, then I've achieved what I want. I hope you're pleased with the amplifier as it stands. I'm certainly delighted with it. And if you like what I'm doing, please, please subscribe to the channel. I'd very much appreciate your support. I'll see you next time.